Hello again everyone and welcome back to Learn Linux TV. In today's video, we're going to take a look at the HL15 from 45 Home Lab, a division of 45 Drives. In this video, I'm going to give you my thoughts and give it a full review. And I'm really excited for this review, not just because I can't wait to check out the HL15, but also because this is the first time I've ever reviewed anything from 45 Home Lab or 45 Drives in general. The HL15 is a storage server with a twist. It's focused on the home lab market. Its goal is to provide home labbers with a solution that they can use to build into network attached storage or maybe some other kind of server that they want to create and have that server be of the same build quality that you typically find in enterprise data centers. And this unit has a really cool custom chassis. It has a very colorful design on the front and that definitely makes the HL15 stand out. On the inside, the server can house up to 15 drives which connect to a completely custom backplane. The HL15 is available in multiple configurations, one of which is fully built. The fully built version comes with a super micro motherboard, an Intel Xeon 3204 CPU, a 750 watt power supply, and also a one terabyte boot drive with Rocky Linux and the Houston UI preloaded. However, you can install another operating system if you want to. The HL15 itself is manufactured by a company called 45 Home Lab, which is a division of 45 drives. And 45 Drives is a company that you might have heard of since several of my colleagues have reviewed products of theirs in the past. And in this video, we're going to check out the HL15. I'm going to give it a full review and, of course, give you my thoughts. However, before we get started, I need to give you guys a quick disclaimer. It's the same disclaimer that I give you in every review that I do on this channel because the policy here at Learn Linux TV is always the same. And a quick summary of that policy is that every video that I do on this channel is a video that I retain 100% creative control over, and everything that I tell you in this video are thoughts that I came up with, and no vendor is allowed to see any review video that I do before you guys get a chance to see it first. So what I'll do in this video is let you know all the pros and cons of the HL15, and I'll let you know by the end of the video whether or not I think you should buy it. And with all of that out of the way, it's time to dive into the review and check out the HL15. The HL15 is available in multiple configurations, one of which is a fully built option. The first two options will give you a bare bones kit, and that might be a great fit for those of you that are wanting to build your own server, but you're looking for a great chassis to install your parts into. But for those of you that want a fully built server, they have an option for that as well. Another aspect of the HL15 that potentially makes it a great fit for network attached storage is the fact that it has a completely custom backplane. With this backplane, you can not only hot swap hard drives, it also supports speeds up to 2000 megabytes a second. And it doesn't matter which of the three configurations you go along with if you order an HL15 for yourself, because each of them will come with this customized backplane. It's standard across the board. But at its core, the HL15 is a bare bones chassis. Since we home lab enthusiasts enjoy building, tweaking, and basically micromanaging our technology, it makes sense to me that this unit starts off as a bare bones kit. The other options come with some or even all of the hardware you need in order to get started. For those of you that purchase the fully built version, here's what you're going to get. The unit will have an Intel Xeon 3204 CPU, 16 gigs of RAM, and a one terabyte boot drive, which is kind of crazy for a boot drive. Speaking of crazy, the pre-built version supports up to two terabytes of RAM, and how cool would it be to have that much memory? I'll talk about the specs a bit more later in the video. Some other things that I'd like to point out about the HL15 is that it has built-in IPMI for remote management, which means you can access your server anytime without a monitor. In fact, there's a network port dedicated for this console, this one right here. When it comes to the operating system, the pre-built version comes with Rocky Linux pre-installed, and it also has their Houston UI pre-installed as well. I'll cover the Houston UI later in this video, but yes, you can install another Linux distribution if you wish. Let's switch gears and take a look at what the out-of-box experience is like for those of you that purchased the pre-built version. The server that was sent to me came with a one terabyte boot drive, and like I mentioned earlier, it's pre-loaded with Rocky Linux, so you can power it on and use it right away. To set up my unit, I use the IPMI console, which is how I recommend you do the same. The first thing that I recommend that you configure within this console is to change the remote viewer to HTML5 mode. It defaults to Java when you first power it on, but that's a security risk and I don't recommend that anyone installs Java 
So definitely switch it to HTML5 mode to avoid installing Java altogether. Now it might seem strange that Java is the default here, but that's a super micro thing, but I digress. Once you switch the viewer to HTML5 mode, you can watch it boot right there in the console. The power button is on the back of the unit, but you can also power the unit on right from within the IPMI console itself. In fact, the IPMI console lets you do all kinds of cool things, including attaching an ISO image and booting from it without having to grab a flash drive. That just goes to show you that some of the best technologies out there are born out of laziness. Once the server boots up, you'll be presented with a login screen, and the default username and password for the Linux install should be shown on some documentation that's included in the box, but other than that, it was pretty straightforward. If you do plan on keeping the pre-installed version of Rocky Linux, I do recommend that you change the password. On my unit, the Houston interface wasn't available out of the box. It was installed, but it wasn't running. And this makes sense, actually, since it's best not to have a service listen for connections unless you plan on using it. But just like any other Linux service, all you have to do to fix this is run systemctl enable dash dash now cockpit dot socket. Once you run that command, it's going to start the service and then also ensure that it starts every time the server boots. Once it starts running, you'll notice that port 9090 is available on your server and that's the port you'll use to access the Houston UI. In fact, let's take a look at Houston right now. I'll be making a dedicated video for this at some point in the near future that's going to go over it in more detail. But as part of this review, it's definitely something that I want to mention. The Houston UI is a completely optional service that you can use that provides you with a web console, and that web console will help you manage your server. Since it's optional, you know, disabled by default, this means that if you prefer to use the terminal for everything, you can ignore Houston, but I think it's still worth checking out. When you first log in, you'll see an overview screen that will show you your current CPU and memory usage, among other things. But Houston is more than just a dashboard. With it, you can do things like browse a file system, access a terminal, create a ZFS pool and manage it, and even spin up virtual machines. There's quite a bit that you could do with this. In fact, you can even use it to set up file shares, so for some of you, Houston might be all you need. Now let's switch gears and talk about the build quality. And you know what? It's really, really good. The chassis is made of thick metal, and it reminds me of the metal that's used in the Thelio desktops that System76 makes. At no point does the unit feel cheap, and the colorful bezel on the front is also a nice touch. Once you open the case, you'll see the backplane in the front of the unit, along with slots for up to 15 hard drives. In that same area, you'll find six cooling fans, which will help the unit stay cool. The way the fans are situated is that they'll help keep the hard drives cool and then blow any hot air off the back of the unit. Now the thing is though, these aren't the quietest fans I've ever used. Are they reasonable? Yes. But are they silent? Well, no. In fact, you will hear this unit when it's running, but again, it's not going to be the loudest thing you've ever heard, but if you're looking for something that's completely silent, well, the HL15 is not for you. For the most part, I think the chassis is well built. I really love it. But one thing that might seem a bit strange for some of you is that we have 15 hot swappable hard drive bays on the inside of the unit, but the only way to swap a hard drive is to, well, open the case. Sorry to interrupt myself, but I just wanted to let you know that I really enjoy making this content for you guys. I have a ton of fun. If you enjoy the content that I produce, then please consider supporting Learn Linux TV. The thing is, producing content like this isn't cheap. So by giving back to the channel, you can help me make even more content for you guys. And to find out more about how you can support Learn Linux TV, what you could do is go to support.learnlinux.tv and there you'll find some of the ways that you can help support the channel. Anyway, let's get back to the video. I think it's really cool they could hot swap hard drives, but the effectiveness of this might be limited by the fact that there's no way to access those hard drives without opening the case. Continuing, let's talk about pricing. Who should consider the HL15? Is it affordable? Is it even worth buying in the first place? Well, let's talk about that. I mentioned this earlier in the review, but the first thing to keep in mind is that there's three configurations when you go to order the HL15. So there's three configurations, but how much do they cost? Well, the entry level model starts at 799 US dollars. The second configuration includes a power supply and cables, and that runs at around 910 US dollars. But the fully configured pre-built version is going to set you back 2,000 US dollars. And you know what? I'm not going to sugarcoat it. That's very expensive. But if you do decide to buy the fully assembled package, what do you get? 
Well first, the motherboard that comes pre-installed is model X11 SPH NCTF. That's a mouthful. It's a super micro motherboard and it's something that you can store separately and believe it or not, this board costs over 800 US dollars by itself. And that might be part of the reason why the $2,000 version is, well, $2,000. And even though it's expensive, this motherboard is very, very good. It's very capable and has a lot of room for expansion. And continuing, we have an Intel Xeon 3204 CPU, and this CPU has six cores that clock in at 1.9 gigahertz apiece. There's no turbo here, they're literally just 1.9 gigahertz. When it comes to RAM, the assembled HL15 defaults with 16 gigs of ECC memory, but you can also order this unit with 32 gigs of RAM if you want to. The board itself can go beyond that, but when I check the order page, 16 and 32 gigs of RAM are the only options. So if you do order an HL15, you will be able to expand it, which is pretty cool. But no matter what, the best thing about the HL15 is that with it, you can have, like I mentioned earlier a few times, up to 15 drives. And I keep mentioning this because, well, that's a lot of hard drives. So if you want to build a NAS solution, this might be a very good fit for that. And you know what? It is a good fit for that. Overall, I really love the HL15. It's a premium product, it's so well built. I mean, it's very durable, has a great motherboard, and it's a really awesome solution for those of you that have a home lab. I highly recommend it. But the hesitation that I do have though is the price. So I do recommend this if your budget allows for it. Just make sure you weigh the pros and the cons and see if it fits within your budget, because that is the main downside here, the price. But if price isn't a factor for you or it fits within your budget, I think you're going to love it. Now another piece of criticism I do want to give this unit is that the CPU that it comes with is a bit old. It was released in 2019. So here we have a brand new product, a really good product to be fair, that comes with an older CPU. But it's plenty fast enough for basically any server application that you might want to run on this unit. And it's more than enough for a network attached storage, which is one of the primary use cases that this server or this chassis is going to fulfill. But all in all, the HL15, it's a great product. I really love it. I've enjoyed looking at it and I do highly recommend it. Again, you have to make sure that it fits within your budget and also your use case. For example, if you're setting up a virtualization server and you don't need all the hard drives, then this might be overkill for something like that. But it's not overkill for a network attached storage server or anything else that you might set up. I mean, it would be a good fit for a Plex server considering all the space that you could have for all your movies. So there's definitely a lot that you could use this for. I do recommend considering this. Again, just weigh the pros and the cons and make the decision for yourself. But with all that said, I hope you enjoyed this review. I definitely had a lot of fun checking out the HL15. Let me know what you think about it in the comments down below this video. In the meantime though, thank you so much for checking out this review. I really appreciate it and I'll see you in the next video.